<laughs> so I, you know, we've spent, I don't know what time we started, I really don't, but I, I, I hope this was informative. I hope it's informative to some people that, that look at it, and it will be different. It's the most different of the ones that we've done well, so if we far. Didn't get any young kids. We were influenced by some pretty good people, and maybe our travels yeah. will impress some people because the three of us, in fact, all of the people were in our class, travel all over the world. Well, I think it's I think it's very important. I think it's a wonderful wonderful thing you're doing, Marshall. Well, I, and it's it's living history, it and is. it's an element of the, of the Navy uh, itself that few people know about, or not enough people know about. Even those who are in the program today have no idea of what went before them or yeah. how it got to where it is today, but we're not for the likes of you guys. What we're and doing is that this whole idea of the, the uh, archive is really vital. Absolutely. Because, yeah, and I guess, so I, I guess I've said this in the ledger lines, I've said it to a lot of people and I will continue to say it. What happened in Navy music between 1935 in 1964, when the school moved down here, so much happened. There's a whole span in there during the big band right. years. Artie Shaw is dead now. A lot of folks didn't know that he had an AV band. You know, uh, Sam Donahue. Uh, 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 another name that I just <laughs> lost a minute ago. But that's an aspect that's 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 lost. And, and like Gene put it so well in that first tape, the, the concept is unique. But all, you but all take these people and you mold them, and now you give them instruments and music and you can put them any place and they'll function. And, and that's neat. Yeah. That is so neat. Yeah, and, and just an aside uh, today, which by the way is April 21st, 2005. I signed up a new member down at the registration. Terrific. And the first, one of the first things he asked me is, do you have a historian in your organization? Does he do that? Well, he's a former college professor, Randolph-Macon College. Oh, right. I want to see him. Yeah, you should meet him. Good. Absolutely. Because that was one of the first questions he asked. Terrific. Do you have a historian? Terrific, terrific. All, just, of the, all of these interviews are important. They all, they all fill a slot in, in the overall scheme of the, of the program. When we look back on some of these early films, we will say, <laughs> gosh, they were growing pains, and, and, and indeed they are. But I had 15 classes of student band leaders, and what makes me feel so good today is when I was dropped from the course and I relieved Herb Weber. Herb Weber was in the Sousa band, yeah. and that's who I relieved teaching the advanced course. I mean, there's a lot of people that went in between yeah. there. But that's 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 really neat, you know. Well, did we, oh, with uh, Dutch and Gene, they were talking. Uh, Dutch was talking about that when I was just a boot, a young kid in the bands. John Bleagle. Yeah, John. Herbie <laughs> Young was at school. Yeah. Herbie Weber. Right. All of these people that played with Sousa. They, and John Bleagle, what a guy he was. Yeah. He came out to San Diego. We used to go to the movies together. And he used to, what, what was the movie uh, on Sousa's life? John Philip Sousa. Whatever. The, what was funny, that he sat there and he was disgusted. <laughs> That's not Sousa. <clears throat> Sousa wasn't like that, you know, in the movie there. That, he knew. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, he knew. Yeah. <laughs> this college I was supposed to go to, uh, Stetson University in Florida. I attended a uh, band clinic there three summers before I actually graduated while well, I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And the bandmaster there was a guy named Victor Grable. And yeah. he used to play bassoon with a bassoon band. So yeah. he used to talk to me a lot about that. I played a lot of his arrangements. He yeah. wrote a lot of stuff. Grable yeah. did. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a long, glorious, and very proud history that we have. And we continue to add to it. Uh, and as I said in the last uh, ledger lines, the people that are on this archive group with me, which aren't enough, and, and not enough people, and I hope to spread this out among some more people, uh, 
we should be getting stuff more faster than we can handle it. And I still believe that we can almost put together the vans just by talking to people. Because I keep asking for who, who relieved so-and-so? Did you relieve so-and-so? Or yeah. who, was, who, who sat in front of you? And just by putting things like that together, it's amazing. Because Kessler asked the question, no, Kessler's boss asked the question in the Atlantic Fleet Band, where did Atlantic Fleet Band start from? And nobody had that answer. Now we have that answer. Because Cecil gave it to me, because the Fibland Band was moved from Fibland over to uh, Atlantic Fleet. No, no, is that no, right? No, is that what you told no, me? No, the uh, Sinclair Band. I'm sorry, I use the wrong terminology. Yeah, Sinclair Band was aboard the Pocono. Yes. And they moved, there was an old naval hospital over there off Hampton Boulevard yeah. behind the War College. Yeah. And that's where they moved for their headquarters. And it was uh, right about the time I reported to the band. So I think we have that answer now. And I have a list of the, the leaders of that band. Kessler's not there now. Kessler's got the Academy Band, but the, the XO from the school has got that band, and I will have this answer for him uh, by the time we leave here. And and that's neat, and that's that's the way we... I relieved Cecil. Oh, I sing like No, Newport. Oh, okay. Newport. I was on to Boston, and I had... And when we were at school, and what was it, Kennedy wanted us to be physically fit, started playing volleyball and goofed up my knee and went on a mini cruise coming back off the cruise tried to stand up and the knee wouldn't function so we got back to Boston they called the school they got a new guy to come and relieve me and I went down to relieve Cecil. Tom Crew Desland. Yeah, Desland. I served in Desland, Despac. That's when I went to to the school, the school had just yeah. moved to Virginia Beach. Yeah. Okay. And that's when I went, August of uh, 1964. 64, right. And I went to the school from there. The first thing I did when I got to Newport was check in the hospital. Had an e operation. Well, when you think back about this now, I mean, we, we reached back kind of a, a long way. The Dutch and those guys are back further than us. And I was thinking about this just in the office there yesterday. I looked at the picture in there, it says Bandmasters Conference, 1981. And I looked at it and it says, I just got four rows of officers there. I said, I don't know these people. I said, oh yeah, I do, Phil Field. <laughs> Phil Field was in my 15th class. <laughs> he was in my last class. And of course, there are some other folks that I know. Uh, Dan Clements is in there, and John Fluck is there, and, and a few more. And but, you know what? When we were in the advanced course, Phil Field was a basic student. And we had him in one of our bands. There. Absolutely. And I had I had Fluck um, in a band. I know this is something else. And this was after after we were done with the course, and I was back there on the staff, and was running the rehearsal division there for a while. I had started this concept gone in and gotten permission from Merrinac, who was running band training at the time. I wanted to do a dance band or some dance bands, a band that was a cut above our A bands, okay, because we sent bands out on jobs. We had bands one, two, three, and four. Each one of those bands had an A and a B dance band, yep. sometimes a C. Okay, Division one was bands one and three, division two was bands two and four. So I took the two A dance bands from one, one and three and played them off and got a band. And I did the same thing in division two and got a band. Because the question that had been asked me in the office is, well, when are you gonna rehearse these guys? It's in the morning before school starts. Oh, good colors. I said, but that's it. If they make this band, then they don't have to march the colors. And these guys ate that up. Yeah. And they used to rehearse this band down there in the morning, you know, and whenever they had to do it. And uh, when we had something real special going out of school, I would take those two bands and play them off, and I would get a band. I took a band like that up to Gross Hill, Michigan, with Don Stauffer. John Fluck was a piano player. Uh, there's a moral to the story. 
uh, Don Junker was on the band. Um, uh, uh, the Griffin, uh, uh, Steve Griffith was on, was the lead alto player. And uh, Bud Kowalski was on the band just by the skin of his teeth. Well, the moral of the story is, when we started the Commodores, and we started looking for people, and looked at the people that were in that band. Yeah. That, that came back to the, to the Commodore. So the cream does rise to the top in this method. In the, in the, so how many, when you look through the reunion right now, how many guys do you have here? You had a bunch of them that they were basics to start when you were teaching at the school? Yeah. I got, yeah. I got a couple of guys, so Bill Allen, he was in my first band. Mm -hmm. uh, Lyle Costa, the trumpet player in the concert band this afternoon, he was in my first band. Well, Fluck and Clemens and Field, uh, yeah. and then there are more around, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dick Bonifant. Bonifant, He was yes. in my band when he was 18 years old. Yes. Chess, I was, Chess, when I was on staff in 62 or 3, yeah. Terry Chesson was a boot. Yeah. He was one of the bands. Yeah. I had a whole Terry. bunch of people. Like <laughs> So it's a, it's a growing yeah. knitting yeah. thing. It's it's the ladder. It's you reach down, and because we retired, we retired. But the Navy Musicians Association and our board just retired, and we don't have a program yet to an outreach program to reach into the academy band and into the Navy band and into the Navy in general to invite those people and talk to them about what this program is all about because, hey, it's it's ongoing, you know. And but I guess guys we, are, we guys go on. Were teachers. We were all teachers. Yeah. Okay. It's been good, gents. Let's yeah. keep stuff hey. going.